and welcome to this special interview. We have artist and art teacher Sandy James. Thank you for having us in your studio today. Oh, thank you for coming. We're here for the litmus test. I know. Yeah, <laughs> so it's very exciting. Yeah. I just wanted to ask you, where did it all start? Well, I think it started with me choosing to do art. I chose to do art, but I was directed in the wrong way. And it's not till uh, probably five years ago when I opened Pablo's Art House that I feel really settled in where I needed to be with my art. So I feel really blessed. Yeah. But the journey's been fantastic. Yeah. Was it from a young age, like six or seven or oh, so? Oh, definitely. I remember losing myself in uh, fairy tale pictures. I was there. I was, I was amongst it. The, it just drew me into the imagination of these, these, these drawings. And I would look out the window at school and just dream, dream, dream. I was a terrible dreamer. Terrible dreamer. And, but I was very good at art, so I got awards um, ridiculously at Hornsby Girls High for serious drawing because I liked historical drawings as well. You know, mm. just, just drawing was my love at the time. Drawing. Mm. And it's not till now I get into colour and I've gone a bit stupid with it. <laughs> have you kept your kids' drawings, like your doodles and things? I have a lot of stuff that my mother kept for me mm. and she gave them to me not so long ago and I said thanks. Yeah. Now, I'm, now I'm going to cull, I'm going to start culling. Right. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to build, I'm looking towards um, a new side of things, back to journaling. I'm going to put the things in a journal that I really want to keep just for me, mm. you know, for no one else. I won't burden my kids with all my art. All of your art. <laughs> well, they necessary. are part of your art anyway. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And interest, yeah. A good creation. Good creation. Yeah. <laughs> so were your family artistic? Uh, my dad used to draw for me and I would colour in. He was a very good, you know, technical drawer. Right. Technical. Mm. My uncle was a, an architect, a very good architect in Canberra, mm. um, Bert Reed. And uh, after that, no, no. No one was really artistic. So they excited about you wanting to pursue a career in art? or? I think my dad was just glad I had some sort of ambition. <laughs> <laughs> so he went, right, we'll go and find you something. And I actually wanted to go to Julian Ashton, which was in Sydney, um, George Street, Sydney. And it was where you did the nude drawings and the painting with oil and you wore the beret and you walked around with paint on you and yeah, yeah. the real artist. Right. But my dad um, found Shilato's Design School, which was on the corner of George Street and some other street, really old building. And he, he thought, well, this is the career, it's graphic, uh, you will go in that direction. Um, Miss Phyllis Shilato was about 98. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> well, they wheeled her in. She had those gnarly hands, you know. Oh, what year was this? Oh, well, I just left school, so I can't remember. It would have been, I wish I remember that. It was 1978. Right. Okay, and so um, uh, she was at the end of her run, put it that way, mm. and she was really scary, but mm. she loved being scary. She saw the twinkle in her eye when she's just like, oh, <laughs> You know, so but we did, we did graphic art of her era. I should have gone to East, uh, East Sydney Technical College. Mm. That's where they were kept up to date. So when I came out, I realised we were just really out of touch with everything. After three years, she mm. died after that actually. Oh. Signed my certificate and away she went. Um, but uh, I did learn heaps about colour. I learned heaps about composition. So I'm actually really grateful to have done it. Mm. You know, colour just comes naturally to me, mixing um, tones and tints uh, and, and placement, which I like to fiddle with, you know. I, I had a long series of focus, which was actually putting out of composition, you know, wrong focus. I right. really enjoyed doing wrong focus paintings. Mm. Mm. Right. Mm. Have mm. you ever dabbled in any other types of art? Um, well, um, not really, unless you call um, aerobic instructor <laughs> a performance art. Right. I did that for 10 years. Oh, when you I look did? At, I did. When I look at old footage now, I just think, what was I thinking? But again, it was good because I became a person in front of people. Right. And, um, and you know, it's funny, we all <laughs> were so nervous. I don't know why we all chose to do things like stand up in front of people and jump around in uh, G-strings. <laughs> <laughs> Kick our legs everywhere and 
go woohoo. Yeah. Uh, but we did it, and and also you had to. Um, <coughs> you know it was actually hard work you had to put together a class you mm. had to arrange a class so in some ways it's just arrangement again mm. uh, I do it now with teaching mm. which uh, you know you've got to think about what's your class going to be how are you going to introduce it how's it going to run how long is it going to run mm. you know and I'm what still you want to cover how long yeah 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 that's right yeah and so in 2001 you you studied a fine arts degree at the University of Newcastle I did. Yeah? Yes. So is that the kind of art that you've taken from there that you do now? Um, well, things came from that, yes. Mm. It was conceptual art, you know, and a lot of people had come from Hornsby TAFE or other TAFEs and they had a lot of technique and I just made it up as I went and actually that was an advantage for me too because uh, there were no rules. Mm. You know? Which is what you wanted. Well, I didn't realise that's what I wanted but I had to do it. I yeah. had to make up how I was going to... Um, project what I was trying to say. Mm. You know. So for the audience, what sort of art is that? Conceptual art was at university, your professor will give you a concept and you would have to like, you know, body, it was in body and landscape or um, um, what other things, journey, personal journey, mm. uh, something. So you had to deep, deep, delve deeply and find something that meant something to you. For instance, I wanted to do, I wanted to do a piece of work um, and it was about the journey of a uh, turtle, oh. right? Yeah, because I'd seen turtles in um, northern Queensland where they come onto the land and they lay their eggs or that, you know, they come back to the same place every year and they dig their holes and they bury their little, little babies in there, their little um, pod things and their eggs and then they cover them up and they make their way back and then it's up to the little um, turtles to come out and, you know, hardly any of them make it. Mm. And I thought it was, it was really a, a, a good picture about people as well. But I couldn't get to do this piece of work that I wanted to do because I was always doing housework. I was just, you know, I was stuck in, in the routine and I, I, all I wanted to do was float away and think about what I was going to do. So I ended up taking photos of my hands doing all the housework. Mm. And I called it the life cycle of a housewife and a turtle mm. because I figured we were on the same on a parallel. You're doing this. Yeah, I was doing washing, <laughs> I was doing the cooking. Yeah, that's right. Good at that. <laughs> it was a hand do clothes that. on the line. No, <laughs> they'd no. Or they might drink a lot of salt water. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. But it turned so, out really good and it was a concept. And, and each of these photos turned out to be tiles on a bathroom wall. Mm. And I actually did a, a painting of my face in the mirror on the bathroom wall and I was turning into a turtle. Wow. Had a pink dressing gown on. And um, this was all painted onto the wall as well, and the mop and the bucket and on the floor. It was a whole set. You wow. Know. Yeah, it was great. Got and I was totally that. satisfied because I thought that's not what I was going to do, but that says it all. Yeah. So that's concept. That's conceptual art. Mm. So there's a meaning to it. So four years of the degree was about that. Yes. Mm. Yes. And but did they also teach techniques you? of yeah. using other materials cool. like using strings, uh, turmeric, which I teach some people now, and you know, it smells fantastic. Mm. Um, uh, what other wax, uh, big paintings, um, oh, it's all sorts of things. Sculpture all sorts as well? Of things. No, I did do my own sort of sculpture, but no. This was at Orimba and Newcastle had all the wonderful areas where you um, major in something, but we didn't major in anything. It was right. just, we didn't have the facility. Mm. But we had enthusiastic um, and very, um, very fiery <laughs> professors. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so it, it, all, it all worked out well. And also there was a time where um, Lynn Brunet, my um, lecturer, tutorer, she was bringing out an artist from the Philippines and she just sort of mentioned in the, in the way of like, we're looking for an angel to house these, this man, Charlie Coe, and his wife Anne, has anybody by any chance know of anyone or got anywhere? And I just went like, I do, because we just purchased this little old house and there was no one living in it. Oh. So I got to hang out with an international artist. Wow. And it made me realise that they're people. And I had an introduction then to understand that we're all people. Mm. And I felt on, and it put me on a nice level because I got to know the lecturers at a nice level then. Mm. I wasn't a student anymore. It was sort of more just a, 
a working collaborative, mm. you know. So that's where collaboration came in as well. Mm. I, I really find connection with people the most important thing about art. Mm, for sure. And it has been all the way. And um, so did it open doors for you, the university? Uh, yes, because uh, Neil Berkeley Brown was also another lecturer of mine. And he was um, creating EO. I'd have to look at what it was called again, but it was it was uh, looking for a grant, and he was um, it was to go to Nine Dragons Dragon Heads Symposium in South Korea, mm. and um, and uh, Meredith Copland, um, Meredith Meredith Bryce Copland, and Moore McKajic, uh and myself were chosen as the emerging artists to go across. And it was so exciting. This is when I'd finished university. So I think it was 2004 that we went to the Nine Dragon Heads. And I was at this time doing focus work, which was uh, 360 degree focus. That was, mm -hmm. I would do, I'd done a lot of this focus, turning my heads inside out focus. This was this wide open focus. So 360 degrees meant I went to places and took photos or inter internally took photos all the way around, connected all the photos together enlarged them, traced them, enlarged them again, made them big, and they were on these huge panels, huge panels, and it would go these long, long paintings. I saw one of them, which was Jarvis Bay. Lucky the lady had a very long hallway. Right. Yeah, very long pieces in panels. And another one was in the interior. But I went to Warnervale, and I did how we live, how we, our new society, that sort of all those same houses, oh, sorry, Warnervale, <laughs> but no, really, literally, you pulled everything down, you cut all the trees down, yeah. you put houses there and you planted, everyone had the same tree along the way. Right. And then in the next street, there were the same houses, but maybe turned around the other way. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. I did this really long painting and I took that to South Korea to show how we live. Right. And I run, it was the worst kind of paintings to take, it was like taking a surfboard with me. Yeah. But ironically, they live up ways. Right. They've all these built. As I was going past, I thought, I'm glad I bought my piece this way. We've got the space to do this. Yeah. They do that. Yeah. So it, it fitted nicely. And so I was quite happy with what I did. Mama took um, pieces of paper oh. and put them on the wall with pins. And I thought that was really sensible. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to think about what you're going to take with you if you're going to be a traveling artist. Yeah. Um, and then when we were there, we met Mr. Park, who who I just fell in love with immediately. And, uh, and all the international artists, and we were the three emerging artists from Australia. I'm sure Neil was very nervous because what we had to do, we went to Daejeon Lake, and that was south of Korea in this mad drive. Um, they all drive mad mm. over there. I um, <laughs> uh, actually got to know Meredith very well because I had to sit on her lap oh, no. and uh, with my face pressed up against the windscreen because <laughs> my paintings were so huge. <laughs> And Mama sat in the back, underneath all the luggage, right. with this taxi driver who was determined to get us all there in one car. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we, we became good friends. But um, when we were there, we had to walk around as this group of people from everywhere. And this lake had been um, not a lake. It was a village. Right. But the dam had been let out up further upstream. Ooh. They just let it out because it was overfilling and it just came in and just swamped this village, you know, killing people and all the rest of oh, it. Oh, yeah. No warning. No, it was just their peasants. I don't know, but it was it was really it was really you could feel it. And then there was this lake, so we walked around this lake, and what we had to do was find a site specific, or a site that we would do something. And um, I was drawn to the reeds that were just there, and I. I've seen the old ladies, you know, those ones that can't actually but, stand up yeah, anymore. Yeah. And they were out there doing so. I thought, I know what I'm going to do. I d it just came to me. And I went out there and I thought, I'm going to make a jacket. So I started weaving these reeds. I literally pulled them, didn't take them out of the ground, just pulled them like a loom and wove them, you know. And whilst I was out in this field, and everyone's in their own spot, Meredith chose another spot, Mama was another spot, um, all very conceptual. I remembered my grandmother used to weave and she had looms mm. and I, it hadn't even come to my mind, you know, until I was there. Mm. And it was like she showed me how to do it. And it's, it might sound strange, but 
I was in another world. And I worked really, really hard on this jacket and I made it. And it's actually on the Nine Dragon Heads webs, um, website. So oh, wow. I'm thrilled because it must have meant something to Mr. Park. Yeah. The other thing about Mr. Park is um, I knew exactly where I was going to hang it on this branch near the path. Because what you do is you, people come through and they look at your work and it's ephemeral. You just leave it there till it just goes back into the earth. Mm. So it was just going to go the reeds were made into there were something they were something they were uh, they were the crops for the a village that was no longer there mm. then they were my material for art then they were a jacket and then they would just go back into being you know fluff on the ground like bits mm. of grass on the ground which was it did happen but I remember Mr. Park coming along and uh, and someone was saying and where where are you going to put that Sandy and Mr. Park said she's going to put it on this branch right here and I thought, well, I hadn't told anyone that. Oh, wow. And I, I just looked at Mr. Park and he's just had this twinkle and I thought, you're not human. Yeah. And I've, I've met many people like that. Yeah. Many people is just really, um, excuse me, thrills right so, now. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the, the biggest trip about doing art. If you're true to yourself and you go into this thing, you meet people on the same level. Yeah. It's another plane. It's yeah. that, that daydream out the window. Yeah. Coming to truth. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So do you think travel has affected your yes. your art? Uh, I think so because I've been all through the States, New York. You know, New York is big on art. Um, uh, Barcelona, big on art. Paris, you know, I've been to all these places really big on art. And, um, but it's just the scenes, the people. Uh, no, that's, that's what really gets me. It's just, the, the, you know, you were saying just the realisation that you're in this place. Mm and you're standing in front of this piece in the history. Mm. Mind you, been to the centre of Australia, blew me away. Mm. Rock art, mm. yeah. The wind blowing, yeah. So there's nothing wrong with travelling here. Everything makes sense. Yeah. Everything makes sense. Mm. You know, even at the time, if I don't even know who I'm working with or, or what I'm doing there, I meet someone else and it just keeps going. and. Um, I've met some wonderful people, wonderful people, all giving to the arts. You know, there's so many pockets of really enthusiastic people. Mm. And um, even though I might go along in my blur, I, 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 I do feel it. Yeah. You know, and it would be lovely if we could all just like join up and make one, make it one thing that we all totally can be cohesive with. Yeah. You big know. collaboration. Yeah, big collaboration. That would be interesting. That would be a great dream, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The litmus test is trying to do that too, so yeah, you never well, know. We could make it happen. I hope so. So I wanted to ask you, what's the strangest material you've ever used? All right. Um, I think it was seaweed. Mm. Yeah. You Have you seen the film Silence of the Lambs? No, I'm too scared. Yeah, it's pretty disgusting. It's actually yeah. sewing skin. But this was really similar. Because <laughs> <laughs> you collect it first and everyone's seeing this bag lady, bags of right. seaweed. And you know, smelling all, you as yeah, well. Yeah, like on the search up the coast for seaweed. Yeah, it's really smelly. <laughs> Are you going to put that on your garden? No, I'm going to make art. <laughs> so then you take it home and you've got to spread it out and dry it. And right. it sort of goes soft in the, in the moisture air and then it goes dry. You've got to make sure it doesn't get too dry. <laughs> it's really ridiculous. I learned all this myself. Right. I didn't get it from a recipe anywhere seaweed expert yeah well yeah, uh, yeah. and then um, I sewed it and you know my my son's friends because we lived at Avoca at the time would come around and see what they what what's Daniel and Josh's weird mother doing now <laughs> and they were really cool they loved it they used to come just hang in the studio and I'm sure I influenced a lot of their uh, sixth form art oh, yeah, no, so I was gonna ask you what do your kids art. think of it yeah yeah well um, they honor me they That's do. That's nice. They really yeah. do. Like Dan Daniel is a photographer now, and um, but he has to work. With, he has to work with the um, the regular job. Right. But he travels a lot, and I know he takes photos as he drives out the country, which yeah. is really scary. <laughs> but he also put together a film for me, um, and oh now can I tell you what his name is? Yeah. D it's D Min. Hang on. I yeah, isn't this terrible? I think it's D Min. D D Dash Min. I have to find it. Um, Who is this? He, this is my son Daniel. Um, I'll find it in a minute. D Min. Oh, here it is. D D Min. Com. Au. Oh. How easy was that? <laughs> you 
was so close. Uh, yeah. And he does films for music, uh, you know, goes to bands, he takes photos. But he did a video of me and I'm, I look at it now and that was um, when we did pyramids woven with plastic at the lake for the Five Lands Walk. Yeah. And um, I'm just very grateful because it, it's, it's, um, it, it told the story of why I did it. So mm. I hope someone looks that up and mm, also no. checks out his um, photography. Yeah. It's great. No, it's good. Yeah. Generations. I've forgotten what I was talking about before We were talking that. about what materials you'd use. Oh, yeah. So, yes, that's right. And all the kids. So I actually sewed that into a beautiful little cosy. Mm -hmm. And um, I did a jacket too. And um, some board shorts. But the cosy and the board shorts were perfect because it's sort of like, you know, people swimming. Mm. You know. And uh, that was nice. But then I made a whole clothesline of things from materials. And a literal clothesline as well. I did a literal hung them clothesline. Up on the hung them up on the beach. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, backyard bliss. Yeah, or local laundry. That's it cool. Had two names. <laughs> <laughs> and so do you usually use recycled and natural materials? Is that your thing? Uh, that's my thing that I, I want to do. Mm. That, you know, it's a case of show me the money. And yep. there's no money in that. That's right. just complete and utter soul right. stuff, fantastic stuff. I know there are recycled recycling artists around who are yeah. brilliant and doing it well. Mm. But mine is just more for um, from the soul. Yep. It's not to sell. Have you sold your work before? Yes, I've sold work. Yeah. 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 And is it know, more through exhibitions that you seem to sell? Um, yes. Actually, I have to be honest, there was the Earth to Art, which was really good. That was a collaboration with um, Sharon Tudor Smith and myself at Gecko Art House. Mm -hmm. and Which is uh, where? That was on Cullens Road opposite the tip. Oh, right, yeah. But since gone, she's moved to Tari and she does beautiful art, fantastic mm. artist. She sells really well. Um, uh, but w what she saw, she saw my, my natural art and, um, and I made bowls, I've made pine bowls, I've made all sorts of things that all have meaning. I made a beautiful paper bark dress um, that was tributed to the Lady of the Lake. Um, you know that story? Mm. It's the Arthurian, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, um, legend story. Miss of Avalon. Yes, yeah. I love that story. And that was given to me, now I'm jumping again, but that was given to me by um, um, Tex Scuthorpe, an Aboriginal artist yeah. that I joined with, with Je Jenny Diaz, another fantastic contributing artist, um, coordinator mm. on the coast. and. Um, he, he sort of gave it to me and he told me about the Druids and I think he saw in me something <coughs> and he gave it to me and he said, you should read this. And he laughed because, you know, he gave, gives great tribute to, to, you know, all cultures coming together and, mm. you know, there's no... And, um, and he was so handsome and tall, beautiful. Anyway, he gave me this book and, and ironically, um, I found out through the, the family tree that people have been doing, I come from that area, straight from that area. Right. And I also come from the Spencer family, which this lady um, that I was talking about before, about the taro and whatever, mm. uh, she knew that too. Yeah. And she, and she knows the Spencer family, so that's pretty exciting. All these connections I just yeah. get chills about. Absolutely. Yeah. But going back to Sharon Tudor Smith mm. and Earth to Art, she was very smart. She was a, she was a sign writer, so she had a good business sense. I think that really helps. It really helps if you want to be a seller of your art. Mm. You know, you've got to know what the market is. Be true to yourself still, but you've also got that sense of this is a business. Mm. We need to make money. Mm. So Goofy here goes along with her. And, <laughs> uh, and she puts together, now how, we've got to do this piece, of a mural. A mural for, I don't know what it's called, the Terrigal Golf Club. It's called something else now. I don't know what it's called. I know. Mm. Not a clubby person. And it's this curved wall. And she came to me and she said, I don't want to do another painting of the beach. And she said, I'm looking at your stuff. And I'm thinking, how can we present the outside inside? What a smart lady. And so what we did is um, we did this sort of earth to art where you put it in a perspex box. It started out just as um, two pieces of perspex, but we knew things would drop through. So mm. it ended up a box. And you put it onto the wall. And um, I had to find a way of preserving all these materials. We'd arrange them, which was interesting because it's a bit like a husband and wife arranging cushions <laughs> in a collaborative. You're going like, oh, I'll just move that. And she'd come back, I'll just move that. But we were, we were cooperative. It was mm. really good. And so what we used, pine needles. We used another one with driftwood. We used another one with seaweed. 
We used another one with these beautiful things from, um, uh, from the palm trees. Uh, we used, uh, I can't remember what else we used, oh, all sorts of things from nature. And we preserved them and we put them on the wall and then it would project a shadow onto the wall as well. Mm. And it went along this curve. Well, it was very scary because we were charging a bit and we had to, we had to install it ourselves. We'd never done it before. Anyhow, uh, and I went to the museum and I checked that I was doing the right thing. I was doing the right thing. <coughs> mm. More than the right thing. I was, it was fine. Yeah. Still, it was scary. What, was, what were the people going to think? Yeah. Seeing, you know, bits of stick in perspex on a wall. And there was fantastic comments. Oh, good. <laughs> like, like <laughs> Bill could do that. <laughs> or, you know, there's girls painting the wall. Because we had to paint the wall first. Right. Then we had to install it. And you know, I loved walking around with a drill with, with Shaz. Oh yes. It was very empowering. You know that thing, like yeah. I'm finally, you know, get my boots on and I'm in, I'm where I want to be. <laughs> so two girls working together, it was, it, was, it was the best time of my life really. Yeah. Then we got to, and that, that, they're still there, beautiful pieces oh, of work. Oh, have a look. Oh, please do. Yeah. You have to go in a club. If we figure out which club it is. It's the Terrigal Golf Club. The Terrigal Golf Club. Okay. I think it's called the Breakers now or something yeah. else. I'll get my high socks, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> and then we sold a whole lot to uh, at Seven Mile Seven Mile Beach Eco Resort mm -hmm. to put in every room. Yeah. So we had to go down to Tasmania road trip, didn't we, to right. install them? Yeah. Um, and we sold lots of work there. Yeah. That that was the biggest selling time, and um, we just moved away from that. And I don't know why, but mm. it had its time. Yeah. It was fine. And where have you exhibited in the past? I've uh, well, a lot of local. A lot of local, yeah. um, and obviously in South Korea we had the big exhibition there. Mm. But um, uh, really, uh, Riverside, Saint Ignatius, um, the botanical gardens mm -hmm. we did there. Yep, yeah. um, the I can't remember what it's called. But I'm not really one in search of exhibiting. Right. I'm not an exhibitionist. <laughs> <laughs> Some will dispute that. I was going to say. <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> Yeah. So what would you say to a new emerging <coughs> artist that wanted to get in to some exhibitions? How would they go about uh, that? Well, to be honest, I think young artists are really switched on. They really know what's, what's in now and, and obviously, you know, it's, it's video art. It's, it's, mm. you know, it's using technology. It's not just shunning it. It's using technology and they, they get all the right advice from fantastic teachers at school. You know, Art Express, the exhibition, sensational. And a lot of those kids aren't even going to do art, you know. Mm. But they have the nous, um, and I think that they, they'll know where to go. And mm. as long as they know their intention, and they know where, where, what avenue they want to go into, I mean, really, you see pockets of them. They're singing, you know, that indie kind of thing. They're singing, they're drawing, they, they're sewing, they're knitting again, they're so fine. You know, I, I wouldn't give them any advice myself. They'd be fine. I'd, I'd rather just see what they're doing and just be in awe. Mm. So um, I wanted to ask you, it's the 10 year anniversary for the Five Lands Walk this year and mm. you've been a part of the Five Lands Walk. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes. That, How you got uh, involved? Uh, well, I got involved right from the beginning. Mm. Um, uh, Lynn Bassey from the cafe, the, the, the cafe, the kiosk, sorry, Lynn, down at Avoca Surf Club, uh, said to me, you should come along and listen to this meeting. Con Ryan was um, the, representing the, the Surf Life Saving Club and the Lizards, which I've also done in uh, a work, Lizards. Um, and there was Gabby Duncan, and there was this really enthusiastic Italian, Elio Gabby. No. And, <coughs> excuse me, and they stood up, and he was talking about how he wanted to bring five lands together, and it was very Cinque Terre that I was talking about. Yeah. Cinque Terre were five villages on the coast of Italy. Yes, and they were going broke because their young people were leaving because there was nothing to do there. So what they did is they got a road to join together and it became a honeymoon place to go to. Mm. And so they are thriving now. Mm. It's the place to go. Mm. So that their, their minds got together to save their villages. Well, not that our villages need saving, but it's nice to have a connection. And this is what he wanted to do. And he wanted to do it through um, the, the indigenous um, culture and the, the, um, the migration of the whales north and the winter solstice. And now, of course, there's all other cultures involved too. And just 
bringing the five lands, McMaster's, Copa, Avoca, North Avoca and Terrigal together. Mm. Eventually though, the walk will come all the way from Budai National Park, all the way through a permanent walk, which is just sensational, mm. thanks to Conryan's push. But then I, I heard Elio and I heard um, Gabby and I thought, oh my goodness, I've only recently come back from South Korea. That's why I went. Mm. I'm supposed to be showing people how to do art on the beach. I mean like, da, 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 da. It's not all about me, but I just, and, and you know, there was, there was a spokesperson who was sort of saying, we're going to have, um, you know, marquees and we'll set up showing what art we do as individuals. And I'm going like, no, it's not about us as individuals. It's about us coming together, you mm. know. I could see it. It was just dropped in my lap. Right. So I took it up. And I involved Sharon Tudor Smith. That's how mm. I met her because I thought she was she might need me, but actually I needed her. <laughs> so we needed each other, you yeah. know. And that's what happens all the way along. What was your job in that? <coughs> what did you? Uh, I didn't have a job, but I yeah. volunteered. Yeah. Well, I put it to the organisers that this mm. is this is what I did. We could, um, you know, do ephemeral art. Uh, ephemeral art. That's what it's called. Site specific, um, using what's there um, making something out of it to express um, you know the place to mm. express the place mm. and um, I actually started doing this and uh, someone in told me about um, Andy Goldsworthy I don't know if you know him no, I don't. oh you've got to look him up beautiful man drive you nuts if you had to live with him right <laughs> you know the, but he, he he makes art that's just there and you look and think is that nature or is that real oh, oh I can't explain icicles. He rejoins icicles, so it turns into a pattern. Wow. But he takes photos. That's his art. So yeah. then videos. Um, you've got to look him up. Anyway, um, I was drawn into it by volunteering information. And then after that, um, I gathered people, and they're all meeting at my place. Mike mm. Rugo, Margaret Forty, all these local artists that were heroes to me were coming to my house, wow. you know, which was, which was also an artwork that we built. Um, <laughs> So, uh, Brom and Van de Graaff, they all came to my house. And so, and then, uh, then after that, it progressed. That was my first, I made two bowls. It was my very happy thing. But we also did really stupid things too, you know, really stupid. Uh, we made this um, whale and on sticks, it was very um, faulty tower. And then, what do you call it? Um, you know, the romping through the, the woods with the, the coconut shell. <laughs> it was like, there was six of us walking down with this stick this whale and we went from Avoca to North Avoca over the hill to Terrigal Sounds through the like shops. The Chinese -y. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but we just looked like, and I sort of made all these flags that I thought the kids were all going to follow us, you know, waving the flags, but they picked up the flags and went home. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we, yeah, I'll never do that again, but I, I mean, we all have to start somewhere, but uh, you know, um, <laughs> that's what happens. Then after that, uh, I was involved year after year and it was my thing. Um, Con has now got me into the photography. I do um, all the putting curator of the photography as well. Yeah. Uh, which I was at the beginning. Oh, by the way, that was actually uh, Bruce and my idea, a day in the life of Australia. Mm. Yeah, so we were sitting in bed and he's going like, you should do photography as well. So well, a lot of the ideas that are now huge yeah. came from just little ideas. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, yeah, right from the beginning. Yay. <laughs> Yay yeah, you. Yay yeah, you. And look at all the wonderful people. <laughs> so I was going to ask you about Indigenous artists on the coast. Do you collaborate with them very often? Um, no. Mm. I, I meet up with them. I, I met my mother's hairdresser the other day. She's an Aboriginal painter. She showed me all her work on her phone. Oh, that's good. <laughs> but Is no. there a thriving community here on the coast, do you think? Um, I think Wendy Pauley um, really brings it together. I would say that she is the and Elio and um, Gabby Duncan, mm. they really bring it together. And you know what's really great? That all the kids are learning about it at school. Mm. You know, there's a real understanding of it. And I think that's what they're doing. They're, they're educating and they're out there. I know they are because the evidence comes in, you know. And I, my, my small collaboration that I did have was so worthwhile and I would just, you know, say to, I would collaborate with anybody. Yeah. You will learn something. Yeah. You know, really. <laughs> yeah. You will. And do you think um, there's a need for more 
places to show your art in on the Central Coast? Um, I don't think there's a need to show. I, I think not. What I think we need is more of an audience. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I think there is so, so much enthusiasm for art. We've got heaps of fabulous artists on the coast. Mm. So many of them mm. in pockets everywhere. But it's the lack of audience. Right. Is so that is that sad? the biggest challenge for artists, do you think? I think so. And I think that's um, bringing people from um, outside in, like the Five Lands Festival, mm. you know, and that's what Charlie Trivers, we started bringing um, artists in residence, mm. a little idea, and, um, and they all came to my house, fantastic. They now live up here. It's how do we draw them in? How do we get people other than that small pocket? It's a little right. bit like a garage sale. You know, yeah, you have a yeah. garage sale, you know that, that they were the people that the garage sale last week. You need to expand the audience. Mm. We need to show what we've got, and you're doing that. Mm. So this is this is the best way, I think. Yeah, you know, just awareness. Awareness through social media at the moment. Yeah, that's great. That's fine. And the internet. That's fine. Well, that's the way it's going, isn't it? Yeah, got to mm. get with it, don't we? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to leave that to you. No. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you if a young student asked you how to make a living out of art, what would you tell them? Uh, what would I tell them? Don't expect to become a famous artist. Mm -hmm. You know, put paintings on the wall and you'll sell them every week and don't expect that. Um, you know, again, I wouldn't tell them anything because I don't know. Mm. I don't know. It's a journey. Mm. Just trust in the journey. Uh, the, the best thing I ever saw on the back of a toilet wall is a leap and a net will appear. Mm. And I just leapt before I went to the toilet. <laughs> And into it was, the toilet? No, no I I'm thought just I was just, I'm glad I came here because I read that and I thought I've made the right decision. It's yeah. just about following your instincts, mm -hmm. going where you think you, where your gut tells you to go, mm -hmm. not where your head thinks you should go, mm -hmm. you know, because, um, I, I, cause, you know, I've got heaps of paintings still left on the walls. So. Right, right. You probably never run out of ideas either. No. Um, well, obviously you're also an art teacher as well, so we wanted to talk a little bit about your teaching and how that came about and right. when well, did you start? Again, that was, that was with um, Sharon mm -hmm. um, at, at Gecko Art House. Uh, she just said, do you think we should teach? And I said, yes, let's teach. We were very good. <laughs> we had a funny time, uh, but I learnt a lot. And then I got a job at the Regional Gallery right. and I was teaching there. Um, For how long? Oh, on and off for, I don't know, mm. a long time. Mm. Um, probably nine years. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, then I got here and I've been here five years. And um, this is where I just, I, just, I just leapt again and Annette did appear. I just put a sign out the front, holiday art classes. And um, it, this wasn't here, but um, it was in my home. And, uh, and then it expanded and I, I truly thank those people that came in and mm. trusted the sign and, and it slowly built up and then after school art classes and um, uh, Friday art break, beautiful time with the, with the ladies and, mm. the, and the gentlemen that have come. The Botanical Art Group came here every Tuesday uh, just because they wanted a space. Um, uh, you know, it just all came together, art parties. Mm. So it's not all just teaching, it's mm. just... Um, uh, what do I say? Facilitating. Mm. That's really what it is. You give a suggestion and then you let them go with it, mm -hmm. you know, under control slightly. And creating a space for people to come as well. That, that's it. Um, what was it like teaching at the Gosford Regional Gallery? Um, what was Politely. Like? <laughs> I felt a little bit isolated actually. Right. Yeah, it mm. did. The children were fantastic. What ages did you teach? Uh, they were all seven to 13 years of age. Right. So uh, I, I think it's, uh, it, it, here this gives you something to be yourself, really be yourself, mm. you know. It, but it taught me a lot and it taught me what not to teach. Right. You know, like um, a life-size por life size portraits of yourself. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> there was a lot of cleaning up. Yes. But they loved it. Right. Yeah. And what sort of art form were you teaching the kids at the Gosford Regional Um 
uh, everything. I was trying to teach them about artists. I will never do Jackson Pollock again. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> they don't walk around. Uh, so I tried to introduce them to all sorts of artists and, and try and um, mimic their, their technique or, or their medium, you know, to the, to the right level. Uh, Picasso, of course, is a fantastic favourite. Mm. And um, Miro, I went to the Miro Museum in Barcelona mm. and I thought the kids were better than him. <laughs> uh, so uh, just finding the artist, um, telling them about the artist and um, showing them the pictures and then they, they work from that. And I think a lot of teachers do that now anyway. Mm. You know, it's, it's a little bit of craft. We're doing mosaics this week, but you know, we talked about where you would find mosaics and I, I right. don't think Switzerland has them, do they? That's what the kids said and I was dumbfounded. I don't know. <laughs> Google? <laughs> Google, I don't think so. <laughs> you never know. Beauty so Google. yeah, a bit of craft, but not that much. About, you know, paper mache, mm. um, anything I can think of that's feasible. Yeah, mm. well, anything hands-on, isn't it? Mm. Um, I was going to ask if you think there's enough art teaching facilities on the coast. I'm, I'm not really sure. I'm too busy. <laughs> <laughs> Never had to learn. No, no, there's good <laughs> teachers. There are good teachers um, at North of Ochre and uh, the Regional Gallery again. There's good teachers there. Mm -hmm. They've just started up classes again and I'm very, very pleased about that. Mm. Um, I know there's great teachers at Copacabana. Uh, and Kilcare, there's pockets of teachers that yeah. I know of. Yeah. I don't know them, mm. but um, uh, I'm sure they're all great. They've all got the right thing in heart. Well, I wanted to ask you now, when you're near the, the end of the interview, are you proud of what you've achieved? You know, I, I, am, I looked back to find information which I haven't used at all today, yeah. and for you, yeah. and I am, I am actually astonished at what's happened. Mm. I didn't realise how the journey connected so much mm. in hindsight. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you've had a career of over thirty uh, years. I have. Is, yeah. I have, and you know, and I, 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 the first time I was put money in my hand, I thought it was wrong. Right. But it's not wrong. Don't ever sell yourself short. That's right. You know. So, what's your biggest achievement? Um, I think just standing up and saying, "I'm going to, I'm going to make Pablo's art house." Mm and I'm going to stand on my own two feet. Right. You know, I'm not going to cling to anyone anymore. It's time to yeah. own something, ownership. Yeah. yeah. This is who I am. And the art house is named after your dog, Pablo? Yes. <laughs> who is named after the art? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yes. Well, he's sort of short and a um, bit round. Right. Dark eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> um, is there anything you would have done different? Um, no, because you just can't. Then you wouldn't be you. Yeah, you know, it wouldn't be me. I mean, there's some things that are highly embarrassing, <laughs> especially in aerobics. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. That's the thing. I mean, I could have, I could have just died of embarrassment of some things I've in art and whatever. But you just go, well, that was a learning curve. Yeah. And you know, uh, probably the only thing would be not appreciating totally. The situation at the time mm. i hope to correct that right. and i absolutely am thrilled about the people i've met through every little connection that just happened mm. so i know i couldn't change anything that was the journey mm. and mm. all the collaborations everything everything and yeah. you know i did write can i read something to you that of i of course oh thank you i saw this on um the nine dragons head i mean i'm glad you can edit all this but I saw it on um, the Nine Dragon Heads and it was, it was sort of um, inarticulate because all these people were such intellectuals, I didn't understand the thing they were saying, mm. you know. And all they did was put a string from there to there or something and talked about it for ages. But this is what I wrote as an artist statement to go to South Korea. Feel that art is a visual account of writing a personal journey and as insignificant as one might feel in a world of increasing technological advancement. I hope that the individual does not become the most insignificant component to human existence. At a time when communication has ballooned to the capability of global uh, communica uh, contact, I fear that we are becoming more isolated as individuals and we cannot keep up with the mass of technological advancement and give in to materialism, mass production and development, economic temptation and pitfalls where money and profit are the only recognition of success. 
you know, and it's just happening anyway. This is years ago. I am privileged to be in a situation where I can have the luxury to make art as a commentator and observer of my own environment and time. And my greatest reward is that someone will relate, will relate to my small voice. And I think when I look back at it now and everything I've done is just about connecting mm. and about not worrying about if you're selling, you know, so what? You know, it's only selling a piece of work. Doesn't mean that you're successful. Mm. And I think that's where you talk about collaboration, community, uh, just that I feel so rich, mm. you know. And that statement's still true and it's still inarticulate. That's great. <laughs> <laughs>